you know, I thought, you know, I thought their arm did a really good job. Seeing a lefty like that early for them, he was a little crafty guy and kind of got us in trouble. We left some guys stranded, but that when you have to, when you're that good on defense and on the mound, you can beat a lot of people because if they have a good guy, you can match him. And I think that's what we did. We kept matching him zero zero zero, and that's what you got to do. And then of course the guy that throws the ball 98 miles an hour and it lasts four innings or whatever, that's not easy to score on. So. What a good job by Cabral being out of routine after being national pick, pitcher of the week and trying to go in there and get those six outs. We learned a little bit from him on the back end. We still don't know our team, and we're figuring it out slowly. I just don't like to lose games doing it. Boy, I wish I had that Friday night game back. That'll still hit at me for a couple more days, and I'll get through it. But that win, winning the series, does kind of help me get over it. But, well, we had them beat on Friday night. So, But we got to get better, and that's what we're learning from. But pretty excited for a pretty good weekend. Just uh, your thoughts on, you know, you got a big squad like this, Houston coming in, you were close in that first game. You probably feel like you should have won that game, and you come out and respond with two victories. Just as this thing keeps on growing, the momentum, just how does this feel knowing that you guys can compete with a team like that and take care of business? Well, one thing is, is if we play good, we feel like we can beat anybody. If we pick the ball up, throw strikes, and do what we're capable of doing and have great approaches at the plate. But at the same time, <laughs> it doesn't really matter who you play. You have to play good. You know, it doesn't matter if it's Houston or Texas or Texas A&M. Or, it doesn't matter. you got to play good. And we've had some spurts in there where we didn't play good, and it cost us. Every time we haven't played good, we've gotten beat. So we gotta we got to get more consistent in that part of it. But we can do it. we got the guys that can do it. But we're old, and one thing about it is when you lose, I'm not worried about what they're going to come back from. They're going to come back and get after it. They're not, they're not going to wear that loss onto the next game. They're not, they haven't done that yet. So I'm excited about that, too. Now, I kind of missed it here with the mic, but uh, just the first off, your, your pitchers today, just not giving up any runs, just your thoughts on what they did out there today. Well, anytime you throw a shutout, you know, you got to realize those are seven those are seven returning hitters from that lineup. And that, that team got really hot at the end of the year. So anytime you can throw a zero up, man, you got to be excited about that. But uh, what a great job by Ryan Jackson, the, the pitching guy calling the game. And what a really good weekend he had. And what a good job of my coaching staff and just doing a good job of coaching kids and having kids make adjustments. That was exciting. That was fun to watch. Uh, working on a little side thing on Isaac. Uh, just uh, your thoughts on what he's been able to do so far this year offensively. Obviously, defensively, you know what he can do, but offensively, he's really taking the next step. He's just that, he's that kid ever since that red shirt year. He got big and strong, and he's just putting on a clinic right now. He's he's really competing. He's really hitting balls to all fields, and he's just having great at bat. So, couldn't be more prouder of that kid. He's, he's a tough kid. Uh, coach, uh, just to see the uh, vintage uh, Colton Davis uh, for you out there today, giving you eight strong innings uh, before t turning away to Angelo there at the end, the seven vintage innings. Well, what, what's 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 this whole difference is his breaking ball, and we didn't we didn't put that on him, so you're not trying to take credit for him. He in the off season he got in there in the lab and and started messing with his breaking ball, and come back with the great breaking ball. You know, last year Coach Mallock couldn't get a good breaking ball on him. So whoever helped him get that breaking ball, he come back in the fall with that breaking ball. That breaking ball changes him because it's it's steep. It's got some depth, and it's, it's not like you don't have good fastball, good fastball command. So, man, what a what a good outing by the old guy. Had that tight situation after two hits, first and second, no outs. That's an older kid. You know, younger kids will give those runs up, and he's older. He's been here as long as me, and he got after him, made big pitches. So I was excited. And the last one on my end, you know, now you have a quick turnaround. Now you have to start to add those Tuesday games. First one coming up on the road. Just how do you just continue preparing for that grinder of a schedule that you guys have? Well, this is the first year that I've, I've got J.C. Reese on Tuesday, and we're leaving him out of the weekend. We're trying to go get Tuesdays with a starter. And uh, don't know how it's going to work out. I've made some crazy pitching moves with trying to do what we're doing and, and keeping him out of the weekend. And if he can just stay on Tuesdays and get up to Tuesdays, that can help us. But I'm excited to watch him against Rice, who I know Rice beat Texas Tech. I don't know what they did the last two days, but they're going to be good. But it's exciting to go into a place with a starter instead of the piecing things together like we always do. And uh, so I'm excited to see if it works out. We won't know until we get down about a month from now. We'll find out how those Tuesdays go. And if we don't do some weekend things, we'll wish he was on the weekend. Thoughts on uh, today's pitching performance? Uh, man, I... Couldn't have done it without my great defense behind me. You know, the first few innings there, they're they're slapping the ball and play, and we had, you know, Rob made a couple of good plays and Angel over there. Man, he's scooping the ball, and then Isaac and Cade.
can't beat it, you know. They're uh, some of the top talent on the WAC, and uh, it's it's just easy to pitch when they're behind you. And then obviously when you have someone like Ryan Jackson that stays up all night studying their swing habits and what they take and what they don't take, it just makes pitching a lot easier. So props to them. Uh, you guys were able to come back at the series, you know, crush her on Friday night. Just how good do you guys feel now knowing that you guys are able to come back and close the deal against a squad like that? Oh, man, that's a, that's a huge uh, confidence boost to us. You know, we practiced all fall and spring, you know, knowing that we have the capability of doing whatever we want to do. So with that, with, especially with that big of a win right there, that's just, that's just huge. Uh, it puts confidence on us to go into Rice and play the game that we know how to play. We've always said that we can be any team we want to as long as we play like the team we are and not make errors and stay steady to who we are and just keep the confidence up. And that's where you guys don't give up a run as a, as a group, just for the pitchers, just how great is that? Oh, that's huge, you know. You know, as pitchers, we strive to be the best that we can and help our offense be the best that they can. You know, it's easier for them to do what they would do when we're, uh, we're putting up zeros on the board. You know, they've, they've helped us out the past couple weekends, so, you know, it's not, not always going to be a slugfest. We got to go out there and put zeros on the board and just do what pitchers are supposed to do, you know. And we have a we have a great starting staff. You know, Randy struggled yesterday, but that's not like him, and he's going to bounce back. And then we have, like, Verdugo came in, and he, he shut him out, you know. And then we, we didn't even use all of our bullpen today. We didn't. So we're, we're, we're set. We're good to go. Colton, for you to just come in, uh, have a nice little bounce back start, uh, going back to your vintage ways from last season, just how does this one feel for you to just uh, hang a few zeros up? Oh, it's it's great. You know, uh, it's it's always uh, the first couple of games you gotta you gotta get back in there and find your groove against another team. But I think that uh, pitching against another team is easier for me than pitching against my peers. Obviously, you don't know their faces, so it feels good. It feels good to get back out there and help the team in a good way. Um, I can I just strive to keep doing that the rest of the way through all but until the conference tournament. So and coach alluded to some comments that you had that added a, a little bit of a breaking pitch now. How just how do you feel comfortable throwing that pitch and just uh, mixing it into your rotation now? Oh yeah, last year I had a I had a slider but it ended up being a cutter and it was really hard. It's it's hard to get hitters off your fastball when you can't throw an off speed pitch for a strike or that's about eight to six miles an hour slower than your fastball. So and so I worked all summer at it. I knew I had to get a, another off speed in there, and then I picked a curveball, a little spike curveball grip, and uh, that's helped me out a lot. It boosts your confidence when you can throw an off speed in there and then throw another fastball, and then they're, they're off of it. They're late, so it's huge. I think it helps my uh, pitchability a lot.